it's not quote unquote, just a figure of speech. Uh, and hopefully you've let it sink in uh, this past week. It's life and death. And we're gonna pick up with part two. Uh, last week, feel free to watch the replay, not long, I think it was about 22 minutes. Uh, feel free to watch the replay so that you can get the, the beginning. Uh, just gave you some scriptures. I am a Christian believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I stand on the word of God, biblical principles, because God has proven himself to me over and over and over again in various situations, circumstances, and over time uh, in terms of just believing him. Uh, so I stand on his word because he watches over his word to perform it. And uh, this is probably... Uh, besides, hey, Angela, thanks for joining. Besides, you know, salvation and wanting to see friends, family members, enemies saved uh, and on their way to heaven, it's speaking life and realizing that we have what we say. So if you know me, if you've been around me any length of time, <laughs> you know, I will correct in a minute simply because that is the realization that God gave me multiple years ago. In when I was still living in Maryland, um, and probably even St. Thomas too, but uh, you know, especially in Maryland, that conviction for our words. So tonight we'll just wrap up on that. Just giving a couple scriptures, some that you know, some of you may have heard them, um, and some may not. But you know, just it's not going to be heavy and deep. Um, it's just my passion. It's just my passion for us to realize that, uh, you know, what we're saying is what is, uh, we're, we're seeing what is manifesting. So, uh, the scripture, one scripture, uh, that I'll come from is Mark 5, 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34. And I need to go find it in my Bible because I did not copy and paste it into my notes because I want to read it verbatim, uh, so that I won't, uh, ad lib and mess up, right? We want it to be clear. Um, this, of course, is the story. Welcome, Gary. Thanks for joining. This is a story with a woman with the issue of blood. You may have heard the story. If not reading from the Bible, you heard it in the song, right? Bent over and all that. Yes. So it says, and I'm coming from King James Version for emphasis. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and has suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus and came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch, but his clothes, I don't need to get close to him. I don't need to get in his face. He don't need to lay hands on me. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Different from him, I shall be whole. And straight where the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press. <laughs> he turned around in a crowd of folk and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace. And behold of thy plague. Um, and before I came on, as I said, I didn't write a whole lot of notes. And I was like, Lord, you just speak through me what you want me to share. Um, so as I'm reading this, I'm even, you know, getting different things in terms of um, the faith. You know, what I wrote down is she acted in faith on the confession she made. So because she said, if I could just touch his garment, she believed it and she acted. She went forth, she went out to reach. And his response to her is, your faith made you whole. So in terms of, it's not just the figure of speech, it's life and death. Why I initially came from this particular subject in the first place is because the enemy, the devil, whatever you wanna consider, would want us to not think 
that we have authority, we have power in our words. And he would have us speaking, as I like to say sometimes, out the side of our neck, right? Like, doesn't make sense. Um, and it may seem so innocent. Oh, you know, okay, you know, that's killing me. That's driving me crazy. That's all. And we're talking this and it's like, you know, it's a bigger speech. It's, you know, what people say is what people do is for emphasis. It sounds good. It sounds funny. But the enemy will jump on those stuff, right? So in this particular case, hey, Claudia, thanks for joining live. In this particular scenario, uh, this lady who was overwhelmed, and some of you, some of us may be overwhelmed in a situation, a circumstance that we have been going through, uh, you know, not knowing, you know, how we're going to get through it, not seeing the end. But if we believe, believe God, regardless, how many years, 38 years? She was bent over, you know, by now, many of us, many folks may have given up after the first year, after five years, after 10 years, but she held on in faith, lost everything, went to the doctors, went to the physician from referral to referral in terms of, okay, let's try this. Let's try that. Spent all her money. And of course she shouldn't have been out in public, right? Uh, in those stories, you know, issue of blood flowing, you, you're unclean. But she said she heard Jesus. So she heard about him. She had to have heard that he performed miracles and she believed. And then she said, so for us, my encouragement to us is um, when we're in expectation, right? And we all should be in expectation of better, of the best. When we're in expectation, regardless what it is that we're facing, we want to confess. Confess what? Confess life. Uh, what kind of life? The word, because the word is life, right? Um, Jesus gave us principles in his word. As my pastor said, you know, this, sun, this, this past Sunday, if we practice the principles, we're going to see the promise. If we believe the principles, we are going to see the promises of God's word manifest for us, manifest maybe even for those that we're believing for if they don't have that faith and not speaking, believing contrary to what uh, needs to happen right? We can stand proxy. We can intercede for others. So take an example from this woman with the issue of blood, believe, expect, confess, and then take action. She took action. I don't need to be close to him. I just need to be in the space. I need to be in the environment and I need to just touch his garments, touch his hem. God is looking for that kind of faith in us. He still wants to show himself strong on behalf of those who believe, right? So I dare to believe. And am I perfect? No, because this particular, um, last night I was on a prayer call. Welcome, Stephen. It looks like the has been cut off, but it seems like this is your first time on Periscope. So hang around just a few minutes. You might be encouraged and inspired. I was on a prayer line with Evangelist Ramona Stevens, uh, Donnelly, who I know from St. Thomas. Um, she normally comes on here. If not, she'll catch the replay. But she um, came, gave a scripture where the legions, where uh, Jesus was um, in a particular area, and there was a man who was possessed uh, with a legion, right? Legion of devils, you know, multiple, multiple, multiple demons. And they, the demons knew who Jesus was, son of God, because they addressed him as son of God. And what she brought out that was just so powerful and impactful for me is that the demons addressed him and made a request of him. Demons can't pray. So they didn't pray, but they made a request, son of God, it's not our time yet. So allow us to go into the herd of swines. And Jesus allowed it. So then you the scripture. Um, in terms of in the end times, the devil and his demons will be banished to hell forever. But it wasn't the time yet. So they used the word. They stood on the word and then made a request. So if the demons know the word and can make a request, how much more... Us, one who are believers or Christians, um, praying and interceding for others and for ourselves, can stand on the word and confess the word. And then faith comes by hearing. Uh, and we know the scripture, hearing by the word of God. We must say what we believe so that we can have what we say. So when we are speaking, 
uh, when we are hearing, that's why, you know, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. That's why you want to, you know, listen to the preached word. If it's not in church, you may be bedridden, homebound, sick, shut in and can't get out. But you get the scriptures, you get the Bible on CD so that it can be, you know, heard or you're reading it and you're confessing it. So it's getting into your hearing, it's getting into your spirit. Faith comes by hearing. So this is a faith walk that we are we are in, right? So we want to be building our faith for life, for everything that we do. So we want to be mindful of what we're hearing, right? What's going into our heart? That's why, you know, sometimes it's like you need to guard your ear gate, get, guard your eye gates. Um, you know, sometimes certain music, sometimes certain movies, uh, it. It, it, it's like an irritation in my spirit. No, I'm not condemning folks who watch and listen to different things, but I know for me what it does to me at times, right? So you want to be mindful of what we're allowing to come into our space, come into our uh, environment in terms of what we're hearing because it will get down in our hearts. So in this particular case where you know, the doctors are like, okay, you know, there's nothing else that we can do. You're going to stay in that state. You need to get a different confession. You need to get somebody agreeing with you. Am I saying stop taking your medicine? No, that is not what I'm saying. But I'm saying take your medicine by faith, believing for healing, confessing healing. By Jesus stripes, I'm healed. I'm a witness <laughs> of that confession. And I was just sharing that with you know a family member this particular meeting in term uh, this particular weekend in terms of believing by faith. So. The woman with the issue of blood, she acted in faith on the confession she made. So we won't don't want to just speak, 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 and not act. But we want to put action to our faith. That was a previous, previous Periscope broadcast. Go on back in the archives. They're all live. So it's not just the figure of speech. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you. Oh, you can say that. It's not going to hurt anything. Right. The devil is what? A liar. He's the father of lies. He's a deceiver. The truth is not in him. So even if there's something that sounds right, if it's coming from the enemy, if it's laced with any kind of doubt uh, or unbelief, that is of the enemy, right? And who want to get you off focus, right? Get you off course. My last scripture, welcome AJ321 to Periscope. Uh, glad you joined us. Catch, go on back from the beginning once we're finished so you can catch the whole message. The last scripture I'm going to give you is Romans 10, 9 to 10. Um, and verse 17 of that chapter is what we were talking about in terms of faith comes by hearing. But when I read that entire chapter in terms of uh, preparing for this broadcast, that particular scripture I saw a different emphasis, Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shall confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and should believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What we have to do, we have to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, and we're going to be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So when I looked at that, it's like, okay, when we, you know, give people the plan of salvation, when we accept Jesus, it's simple as that. We just need to believe and confess. So why many of us don't believe and confess for the supernatural to happen in our lives? Why don't we believe and confess, um, you know, for change to take place in our lives, right? It's a process, but if we can believe, if salvation is as simple as confessing with your mouth, believing your heart, and you're going to be saved, what about everything else, right? So as we close this evening, my challenge, my encouragement to you is mind your confession, right? Life and death is in our, the power of our tongue. Thanks for that super heart, cuz. Mind our confession. The word of God doesn't lie. That's Proverbs 18, 21. It tells us that. As may, being made in the image of God, of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, when God said, let there be light, we have the ability to create with our mouths. So what are we creating? This particular weekend being Mother's Day, um, 
And as our pastor, again, this is so fresh in my mind yesterday, spoke of Mother's Day being probably one of the hardest uh, celebration times. And in essence, because you're celebrating mothers and especially for those persons who may have lost their mother or for a mother who may have lost their child, it's hard. And um, in this fitness group that I'm a part of, uh, there are a couple people, one actually last week uh, or the week before mentioned that the anniversary of her mom's death is coming up. And she's just been in bed for two days and she doesn't know how she's going to face it. And thank God my mother is still here in the natural. However, I felt that for her. Um, and I think I posted a prayer and encouragement or whatever. And then this past weekend, another one, I'm not going to be able to do my steps. I'm not eating, you know, I'm not feeling this grief is overtaking me. That's my paraphrase and essence of what they said, because her, it's not an anniversary, but this would be the first Mother's Day without her mom because her mom passed in 2018. So when I prayed Sunday morning, in terms of when I made a post, my prayer was for them, for whoever going through, whether it's the loss of a mother or whatever challenges or issues, is to receive the comfort, the ministry, the strength that the Lord can provide. Because we can pray for people, uh, we can pray for their strength, pray for the encouragement, but we have to receive. And a lot of times we may be receiving by faith. I'm not feeling good. I'm feeling grieved. I'm feeling overwhelmed. But God, God is faithful. So just like what we say we're going to see, we want to receive all that God has for us. I want us to be encouraged. I want us to be reminded of the impact that we have through the words that we speak. So Father God, I give you the praise, the honor and glory. I thank you, Father God, for everyone that is watching, those that will watch the replay. I pray, Father God, that you would minister to every area of their lives. I pray, Lord God, for those who may not know you in the pardon of their sins, that they will come to know you, that they will come to confess you as Lord, believe in their heart and be saved, receive salvation and all that comes with that. I pray for those, Lord God, who are in situations and circumstances that may have uh, manifested speaking what they were seeing and not what they want to see. I pray, Father God, that their minds will be transformed to the truth of your word, to the revelation uh, of your word, uh, Lord God, and that they will speak uh, with discernment, uh, Lord God, and that they will speak uh, being cautious, um, not timid, but being cautious, uh, seeking you, trusting you, and changing uh, their confession so that they can see different. So I thank you, Lord God, for change and transformation. I thank you, Lord God, that revelation brings change. So I pray that they would receive what has been said for truly, 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 your word is sure. I thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Lord, I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. I expect change. I expect transformation not just for me, but for everyone watching live and on the replay. So Lord God, it's not just a figure of speech, it's life or death. So may we speak life and live, not just over ourselves, but over our family members, over our circumstances, over our workplaces. May we speak victory, speak your word. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We are healed by Jesus' stripes. May we get that scripture for our situation and confess it until we see manifestation because your words don't return to you void, Lord God, but they perform, they accomplish your intended purpose. So I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for the victory for this word today. And I thank you for what you're going to manifest on our behalf throughout not just this day and this week, but throughout this month and the rest of our lives as we implement what we hear. So Holy Spirit, I thank you. I praise you. Have your way in and through our lives, Lord God. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray with thanksgiving. 
Amen. Thank y'all for tuning in, for sharing, investing your time uh, with me on this Monday. We're here every Monday at 6 p.m. sharp uh, with encouragement, inspiration, and challenge. Be mindful of what you're saying. And guess what? We may mess up. If you mess up, you say something that you really don't want to see, cast it down in Jesus' name. Lord, forgive me. I repent. I come against that. I don't want to see that manifest. You change that. You turn. You shift. Right? And, uh, you know, be blessed by, by what, you know, God is going to manifest. It's, it's already done in the spirit. We're just waiting for the manifestation. So I believe for you. I believe with you for healing, for employment, for increase, for salvation, for whatever it is, according to the plan of God, right? Whatever you're believing for. Those of you who are discouraged and depressed right now, trust God. He is faithful. I pray that he would flood your heart, your mind, your environment, your space, hit your space with his presence. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Until you can see it, confess that. Thank you, Lord, for your joy. Thank you, Lord, for your peace, right? And watch things change and turn around. Thank you. Love you. Appreciate you all. Have an amazing evening and a fruitful, favor-filled week. Until the next time, thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye. Wrong way. Time to organize the papers on my desk so that doesn't happen again. <laughs> I can laugh at myself, right? I'm in a different place, a better place. God bless you all. Bye-bye.